What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to bind text without a button for Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, I'm going to show you how to bind text without a button. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Alright, so I got asked this question for PyQt5 the other day. I figured, hey, I will do it for that and we might as well do it for Kinter as well. How do you bind text without a button? Now, usually when we do bindings, we click a button and then it binds a thing or does a thing or whatever. So how do we do it without a button? So you can see I can uh, delete this and I can say, you know, hello, this is me typing. And as soon as I type, it appears down here in the label. So notice we're not now clicking a button which takes the stuff from here and then transfers it to the label like we normally would. We're just typing stuff, and as we do, it pops up in the label. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the Kinter playlist with over 200 other Kinter videos. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we've always got. So let's just come through and rough this out real quick. Let's create a text box. I'm going to call it my text. That's going to be a text box. We want to put it in root. We want the width to be, I don't know, whatever, let's say 50, the height to be like 20. And let's also give this a font of Helvetica and like a size of 14 to make it a little bit bigger. All right, so then let's my underscore text dot pack this guy and give it a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. So there's our text box. Now underneath this, we also need a label. So I'm gonna create a label called my label. And this is just gonna be a label. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal, uh, type stuff above, whatever. And again, let's also give this a font of Helvetica and a size of 14, just to make it a little bigger, easier to read. And again, let's my underscore label dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen. Okay, so that should be all there is to that. Let's go ahead and save this. I've called it bind text.py. Let's run this just to make sure that looks okay. So I'm in my C slash GUI directory and we can just run Python bind text dot by and when we do this is much too big. So let's see, let's, uh, I don't know, give this a change the font size to 12 on here. That should make the box a little smaller. Run this guy again. And okay, that looks better. So we've got our box, we could type stuff in it, nothing happens. Now, we just need to bind this text box. And we've done bindings before, we already know how to do that. So we would call my underscore text dot bind. And then we want some sort of binding, and then we want to call some event. And I'm just going to call this uh, labeler, labeler, <laughs> right? So let's create this function real quick. So define labeler, we could just pass for now. So what do we actually want to do? Now, normally we have a button click or something or a motion when we move our mouse or typing keys on your keyboard, you just use key, right? So that's all there is to that. Now remember, whenever we create a binding, it creates an event, a keyboard event, a mouse event, some sort of event, and we need to push that event into that function. So I'll just call it E there. And here we could just do whatever we want. So this is gonna be my underscore label dot config, and we wanna set the text equal to something. Well, what do we wanna update it to? Well, we wanna update the label to whatever is in our text box, right? So that's just gonna be my text dot get, and we want from the position 1.0 to end. Now this won't really do the trick, but it'll get us most of the way there. So if we go ahead and save this, I'll show you what I mean. If we run this guy, now we can type in, let's type in my, now notice I've typed in my and only the M is showing up. If I hit the space bar, boom, then it shows up. Name, boom, is John Elder, period period doesn't show up till I hit the space bar. So that's an issue, right? So that's not great. And we can fix that a couple of different ways. What I'm going to do is grab whatever the last character is we typed. And we can do that because we're passing in that event, right? So we can just on here slap in a e dot care. The dot car character comes attached to the event. So we can just grab that and also slap that on there. This is going to do something weird as well. So let's run this and see. Here we can go, hello, and you'll notice it's bopping it down below. Hello, my name, but it's still doing it. But that's not great also. So what's going on here 
is the entry box sort of has a line break at the end that's sort of invisible. And now that's getting sucked into the whole thing. So we could fix that as well. Uh, this is just text box stuff. If you were using an entry box, you would obviously wouldn't have to do it this way. But here we can go end plus, and we want to subtract out the last character, negative one C. That should do the trick, unless we have to do this all into one variable, which we might have to. Let's see. Uh, nope, that works. Hello. I just typed M. Boom, it pops up. My name is John Elder. Here, uh, exclamation point. And there we go. So as we continue to type, the things pop up, <laughs> right? And this just keeps going on, going on, going, whatever. And that's all there is to it. So that's how to sort of bind text from a thing directly to a thing without having to, you know, click your mouse button or hit enter or do some other thing. You click a button, for instance, anything like that. Pretty simple. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeby.com where you can find all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeby.com, and I'll see you in the next video.